In this video, we're going to uh, prove an interesting property of uh, Fibonacci numbers. Let's recall how these are defined. So we start by defining uh, the first one, F0 is going to be equal to 1. And the next one, F1, that's going to be 1 as well. And the general rule is that uh, Fn is going to be the sum of the previous two. n at least 2, we define fn to be fn minus 2 plus fn minus 1, the sum of the previous two for the Nazi numbers. Um, <clears throat> so let's see how that works out for the first few cases. So uh, f2 is f0 plus f1. And f1 is 1, and f, uh, f0 is 1, and f1 is also equal to 1, so that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. Uh, <coughs> and then if you want f3, Okay, so that's going to be f1 plus f2, the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. Okay, and then the three, so your f1 was 1, which is here, and your f2 was 2, which is here. So that's 3. Then your f4, n is f2 plus f3. So here's f2, is that 2, and here's f3, is that 3 here? So we get 5. F5 is F3 plus F4. Okay, so here's our F3 is 3, our F4 is 5, uh, and so on. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> yeah, so these are kind of interesting numbers. They come up in a bunch of uh, mathematical contexts, but also in some biological contexts. We have these Fibonacci numbers. And so it's interesting to have a kind of more, uh, a more explicit formula. And of course, this a recursion here, this allows us to calculate any Fibonacci number, but uh, if you wanted to know what's f a thousand, then you'd have to do kind of a, a thousand steps in this. You might like to have a kind of a, a different formula for um, There are several formulae you can, you can use for Fibonacci numbers, but uh, so here we're going to prove one that uh, involves binomial coefficients. Okay, so, <coughs> um, so the claim is that the Fibonacci number fn the uh, binomial coefficient n, n choose 0, and then we decrease the top by 1 and increase the bottom by 1, F, yeah, n minus 1 choose 1, we decrease the uh, top by another one, and uh, the bottom as well, uh, and so on. Okay, so the principle always kind of looks like it's an infinite sum, but of course it isn't really, because uh, uh, if you look at n choose k, the binomial coefficient, that's the number of ways of choosing k things from n. And, of course, k is bigger than n, then you can't do that. So, uh, um, so eventually, in this sequence here, the, the top number will become less than the bottom number, uh, and then the binomial coefficients from that point on will be zero. So there's really only finitely many terms in this stuff. <coughs> so this is what we're supposed to be proving, that fn is equal to the sum here. Uh, and then let's uh, just introduce notation for this. We're going to call this sum here, we're going to call it gn. So the claim now is that we're supposed to prove that fn is the same as gn. So let's, uh, let's start by looking at the first few cases. Uh, so let's look at g0. So that uh, we start with 0 choose 0, and then uh, you know, the next one would be minus, uh, <coughs> uh, okay, let's write it as minus 1 choose 1. Now, of course, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, uh, as soon as you've got a, mi a negative thing on the top, then it's zero, or yeah, you've got a uh, um, <coughs> the top's, less, uh, top's less than the bottom, you get zero, so that, that we can ignore. And then here we've got uh, just uh, zero choose zero, a number of ways of choosing zero things from zero things. That's equal to one, or if you like, it's a zero factorial over zero factorial squared, but zero factorial is just equal to one as well. So, uh, um, so that's just equal to one. And, uh, and that, of course, is the same as F0. F0 is defined up here to be equal to 1. Uh, so that's our fir the first thing, so that's, that's good. And then uh, what about G1? Okay, so that's uh, 1 choose 0. 0 choose 1, and so on. 
Okay, again, zero choose one because you've got uh, more uh, more on the bottom than the top. That's a zero. Uh, so you've just got this one choose zero. One choose zero again is equal to one. Okay, it's a number of ways of choosing zero things from uh, one thing. It's just zero one, um, and uh, that's the same as f one. So we're in good shape. <coughs> okay, so uh, <coughs> so that's the beginning. Uh, but uh, now we need to uh, we need to prove this for all n. So we're going to do that by induction. Um, so uh, uh, clear this board, and then uh, we'll uh, start with the induction step. So now we're going to do the induction step, which works like this. So uh, suppose that we know that uh, fk is the same as gk for all k less than uh, some integer n, and we need to show fn is equal to gn. Okay. We've got a statement that we want to prove. We want to prove this uh, fn equals gn for all n. We're going to prove it by induction, assuming that it's true for all smaller k, and then we need to prove it uh, for the next one, which is f. And uh, <coughs> so we're going to do, uh, do this uh, by um, using the uh, Pascal's relation. Let's recall how Pascal's relation goes. It says that uh, P choose Q, that's the same uh, as uh, P minus 1 choose Q minus 1 plus P minus 1 choose Q. And uh, we need Q to be uh, bigger than 0, so that's a, for this to work. <coughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's what we're going to use. So now let's look at uh, this GN. Supposed to be proving that Gn is equal to Fn. So uh, let's recall what was the definition of Gn. Okay, Gn was uh, n choose 0 plus n minus 1 choose 1 plus uh, n minus 2 choose 2 plus n minus 3 choose 3 plus etc. Okay, so we're going to uh, use Pascal's relation on each of these terms. So let's look, for example, at this term here, uh, n minus 3 choose 3. So by this Pascal relation, uh, you get uh, reduce, reduce the top thing by 1 and reduce the bottom thing by 1. So n, n minus 4 choose 2. That was one of the two terms in Pascal's relation. And the other one uh, is where we don't re reduce the bottom. We just leave that as uh, n minus 4 choose 3. Do the same thing here. Okay, so you get uh, n minus 3, and again here we, first one, we reduce the bottom index by 1, and uh, in the second one, uh, we keep the bottom index the same. Same again here, n minus 2 here, and then here we reduce that down to 0, and uh, here we leave it as it is. <coughs> okay? But then, uh, then there's this first term here. Uh, we need to do this one a little bit differently, because remember, this Pascal's relation is only valid when q is strictly positive, and here q is 0. Okay? But uh, what is this n choose 0? Because anything choose 0 is just equal to 1. Okay? So this is just equal to 1, and uh, n minus 1 choose 0 is also equal to 1. So we can replace that guy um, by just n minus 1 choose 0. <coughs> okay, so gn is the sum of all this stuff here. And so what does that give us? Okay, well, let's look at what we've got here. n minus 2 to 0, uh, n minus 3 to 1, n minus 4 to 2, etc. Okay, so all this, this is just precisely our definition of g n minus 2. And then what about this stuff here? We've got n minus 1 to 0, then n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, all decreasing by 1, going up by 1 on the bottom, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is just the uh, definition of g n minus 1. But we've got this induction hypothesis that fk is the same as gk whenever k is less than n. Okay, so uh, if gn minus 2 is the same as fn minus 2, and the gn minus 1 is the same as fn minus 1. But now, now we just have to remember the definition of these Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci number fn is just defined to be the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers, fn minus 2 and fn minus 1. Uh, so what we've got here is fn. So now what we've proved 
is that Gn is the same as Fn, which is what we wanted to prove. Okay? And so that, uh, that completes the induction step. Right? So we know that if Fk and Gk are the same less than before n, then it's the same at n as well. And therefore, uh, Fn and Gn are going to be the same for all n. Okay? 